This video is brought to you by Squarespace. So in this video, I've got something rather serious to admit to all of you. I'm a terrain hoarder. And this is sort of a joke, but not really. I just have so much of this stuff. It clutters up my entire home, hides behind my furniture, eats my snacks at night, and is just generally a huge nuisance. So today I am making a commitment. I have come up with a quick, relatively simple terrain paint scheme using just a few colors that I can apply to pretty much any terrain in my collection. So at the very least, I have committed to a paint scheme and I have painted more than zero amount of terrain in 2022. So first things first, I primed everything in black, and today we're going to use sort of a slap chop method for these, but in this case I wanted a more warm, rusty feel with some of this terrain, so we're going to go with one of my favorite brown-orange colors, Parasite Brown. We're going to be using an airbrush for most of the heavy lifting here, and since Parasite Brown is a color I'm going to be using a lot in this scheme, I'm actually taking one of my half-full bottles of it and filling the rest up with airbrush thinner. This makes it so much easier to use in the airbrush and after some vigorous shaking, we're ready to go. I dropped some of this paint down into my airbrush and then applied it lightly over all the terrain that I want to paint as I would a traditional Zenithal highlight, mostly from above, but in this case I'm also spraying in some random patterns to show that some areas of the terrain are more worn down or dirty than others. On smaller models, this isn't really necessary, but on larger models, I find it can help add a lot of interest. You can see here the paint is also starting to speckle a bit, and that's because at this point I think I needed to either clean my airbrush more or thin down the paint more. But either way, before I did either of those things, I decided to work with it to create some interesting speckling patterns on the terrain. When approaching some of my more fantasy terrain, with not just stone and metal, but also some wooden surfaces, I took the same approach, but went heavier on the wooden surface with just the brown color to save some work down the line. And our next step for both of these terrain sets is going to be adding the white highlight to everything. This is a pretty standard step when you're doing any sort of underpainting or slap chop, but the difference here is that we have a ton of wide open surfaces which lack texture, so we can actually use our airbrush to add those patterns in at this phase if we we want to. And I would say this is actually one of the main strengths of using an airbrush for terrain, and I found it was especially fun to do on the fantasy stonework terrain. You just apply some random patterns, alternating between dark and light, and it usually ends up looking like marble or polished stone. There's really no way to lose here, and it's pretty much always going to be a fun time. However, if you don't have an airbrush and you're somehow still watching the video at this point, you could always just use a sponge to get a similar effect if you want to. I did this in one of my previous terrain videos, so you can go and see how I did that, link down in the description. You can also see here I applied a lot less white to the wooden areas on the fantasy terrain, just want to save myself some time having to paint it brown again later. With our white highlights applied, the sci-fi piece has a nice aged concrete look, and we could probably apply some washes and just stop here if this was the look we were going for. If I was painting some of the fabulous terrain from Brutal Cities, for instance, this is probably the route that I would go. The next step I want to add is going to be a dry brush to help bring out some of the fantastic details on this plastic terrain. It would actually be a crime not to do so, so I took the largest brush that I own and used it to give a white dry brush to basically everything. And once our dry brush is done, once again we can see this would be a great place to stop if you were painting up a whole board of terrain and you just wanted to get this stuff done fast. And speaking of getting things done fast, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one website creation platform that I've been using for over a decade now for all of my website needs. It has this really great drag and drop interface that's easy to use, no coding or text technical knowledge required, and lately I have felt especially enamored with their brand new drag and drop grid system, where you can literally arrange the modular elements on your website however you like on the screen to create whatever sort of layout you might want. I've been using my personal Squarespace site to catalog my hobby, sell my own merch, 
and create reference documents to accompany several of my videos throughout 2022. And I have honestly been having a blast with it. And if you're curious what that looks like, you can check out my own Squarespace website over at howlcorp.com. Or if you'd rather create your own Squarespace website, why not check out squarespace.com today for a free trial. And when you're ready to take your website live, go to squarespace.com slash Dana Howell for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The next step, now that we have all of our lovely highlights in place, is to start our glazing steps. Again, if you don't own an airbrush, you could easily do these steps by hand glazing, but it's about 20 times faster with an airbrush, so we're just going to thin down our orange brown from before even more and use it as our glazing color. You can see this is a really versatile color to glaze with as it really warms up all of the white, bringing them into more of a pale sand sort of range but we can also use this to apply rust, grime, and shadows to all the parts of the model where we want that sort of thing. And on the fantasy train, we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're also going to use this opportunity to more strategically reapply the brown orange tones to all of the wooden areas on the terrain, giving them a nice warm wood color that we won't have to do much more to later in order to call it done. And with all of these steps complete, we can now proceed to one of the most fun parts in this process, in my opinion, which is adding more marbling and texture to the stone parts of the models. And in order to make this stone look like marble, you really only have to do one thing, which is to paint each stone in a random way, having one or two points of light on each brick or column. You can see that by doing this, it gives it an instant effect that makes it look like these surfaces are actually made of polished stonework, and you can re-emphasize this by adding a second highlight or two within the first one. Basically, you're just doing layered highlights, but with an airbrush. I find this can be especially fun on large plates, like the floor pieces on top of the sci-fi terrain, and you can just add tons of variety and veins of marble here if you really want to spend time on it. And once we're done here, we can move on and start painting the metal parts on the model. So obviously I thought a lot about what I want to do with the metal parts on these models because there's a lot of metallic surfaces so I experimented quite a bit before committing to any fixed color scheme. But at the end of the day I wanted my sci-fi terrain to look more fantasy and my fantasy terrain to look more Mordheim. So that's right I based this color scheme on the most popular old world Mordheim thing of all time, Tudor style architecture. There are a few basic elements to the Tudor style house, but the most iconic is these large areas of cream white encased by wooden beams of dark brown wood. And in order to echo this in a subtle way on all of our terrain to make it all look good together, I've decided that most of my terrain will be made of pale sand stonework encased by dark brown wrought iron style metal casings. So the pale sand stonework we already have down and the next step is going to be adding our wrought iron color to the metal. You could of course use any transparent dark brown color for this, so I ended up going with Citadel Contrast Saigor Brown. I took my time carefully applying this to all of the metallic areas on the terrain, and I didn't spend too much time thinking about this. And in order to save on paint, I ended up using this method where I would apply a single thick coat. I would then clean off my brush and then use the damp clean brush to sort of spread the paint around on the model, making sure it gets in all of the recesses where I wanted that dark color. Aside from this, I also used a second transparent color to paint all of the wooden areas on the model. And for this, I just tried to match our initial light orange brown color the speed paint color hardened leather would also work pretty well. But in my case, I went with Citadel Contrast Gore Grungefer. I applied this color heavily onto the most textured areas, and I then used a damp brush to spread the paint out over the wider surface of the wood. So at this point, it's all looking pretty good, but the white stonework was not looking as warm as I wanted it to. I really wanted a more pale sand look, so I added a single final pass of shading with our thinned down orange color 
to really bring everything back into that warm range that I wanted. And once this was done, I used some basic silver paint, pick out some of the details on the wrought iron metal. In places where I wanted to emphasize this metallic look even more, I would sometimes just use pale sand instead of a metallic paint to add reflections of light to the metal. At the same time, I also did a small amount of edge highlighting on some of the stone with pale sand, not on every stone or pillar, but just in a few places to add small bits of interest to these models. In some other places, I also used the thin down brown orange color that we used in our airbrush before to add caked in rust to some of the deeper crevices around the metal. I also spent way more time than is probably necessary adding highlights and details to the wood grain and the ropes and for this I just mixed together pale sand and our orange brown color on my palette and just had fun adding all kinds of textures on there with my brush and that's it that is how you can paint pretty much any terrain to look grim dark or Tudor style, Mordheim style, whatever you want to call it, with just a few basic colors. You could of course add more accent colors to this color scheme. For instance, I'll probably use a bright cyan for some of the OSL or jewel effects. And I also think a brick red would also be a nice accent to this terrain if you wanted to add in flooring or roof tiles to any buildings like this. But that is it from me for today. I just really wanted to get some terrain painted before the end of the year. The dream of Howell City is not entirely dead, but now that I have a paint scheme for some of these ruins, I hope to paint up the rest of this terrain slowly but surely in my downtime. Thank you so much for watching my videos all year, supporting me on Patreon, supporting me by liking, subscribing, all that other stuff. I really appreciate any support that you've given me this year. Have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thank you to our lovely new editor, Annie Minis. Go and check out her channel for more mini painting content. And I will see you in 2023.